home to the largest rainforest in the world, being the largest country in South America, and hosting the largest carnival in the world. This is Brazil. Welcome to Open Tierra. Whether you clicked on this video because you're planning an epic Brazilian vacation or you're simply curious about this amazing country, we're going to cover its history, people, and geography. Brazil was initially inhabited by indigenous groups. Portuguese explorer Pedro Alvarez Cabral first saw the area, which he initially called Vera Cruz or True Cross, but it was soon renamed Brazil because of the abundance of Brazil wood found there. Although claimed by Portugal, Brazil was initially largely ignored as Portugal focused its trade efforts with Asia. This neglect allowed other European powers to take advantage and trespass, extracting resources from Brazil. It wasn't until Dom João III of Portugal refocused colonial policy from Asia to the Americas that Brazil was properly developed into a colony. Initially, the colony was split into areas each controlled by different leaders, but this decentralized approach proved ineffective. Therefore, Portugal decided to manage the colony from one central place. Tomé de Sousa was appointed as the first governor general of Brazil and established Salvador as the capital. Sousa also brought Jesuit missionaries to assist in colonizing indigenous people through faith which later on led to conflict with the colonial government. The Jesuits converted indigenous populations and settled them into self-sufficient villages. They were against slavery and protected converted indigenous people from enslavement, leading to conflict with the colonial government, which relied on slave labor for economic gain. This tension eventually resulted in the expulsion of the Jesuit order from Brazil. The conflict over indigenous slave labor was one reason why Brazil became the largest importer of African slaves. As Portugal expanded across Brazil, large gold mines were discovered in Minas Gerais, leading to significant settlement in the region and an influx of slave labor. During Brazil's colonial era, its economy centered around harvesting resources and sending them back to Portugal. Crops like sugarcane were grown on large plantations using enslaved African labor. Napoleon's invasion of Portugal forced the royal family and many of the Portuguese elite to flee to Brazil. Dom João VI initiated significant reforms in Brazil, opening its ports to trade with friendly nations and establishing cultural and scientific institutions such as the National Library and the National Museum. These measures modernized Brazil and facilitated its economic development. Dom João VI eventually returned to Portugal after the French left, leaving his son Dom Pedro I as regent in Brazil. Due to tensions between the Portuguese government and Brazil, Dom Pedro I declared Brazil an independent nation and became its first emperor. His rule was chaotic and his popularity declined rapidly, leading him to abdicate the throne in favor of his five-year-old son, Dom Pedro II. A series of regencies governed until Pedro II officially began his reign at the age of 15. Despite his young age, he proved to be an intelligent and influential leader, guiding Brazil through 49 years of progress and prosperity. He abolished the Atlantic slave trade, reformed the legal system, built Brazil's first railroads and telegraphs, and promoted industrialization. Under his leadership, Brazil experienced impressive economic and cultural growth. In the later years of his reign, Pedro II faced growing Republican opposition. His overthrow in a military coup in 1889 marked Brazil's transition from an empire to a republic led by a civilian president, ending nearly 70 years of monarchy. The newly formed republic faced challenges such as economic instability, military uprisings, and disputes over power between states and the federal government. Coffee, 
became Brazil's primary export during this period, playing a crucial role in the economy. In 1930, Getulio Vargas came to power and established a new authoritarian nationalist government. Under his regime, Vargas pursued industrialization, workers' rights, and Brazilian nationalism, though his rule was marked by censorship and human rights abuses. After Vargas was ousted, Brazil transitioned to a democracy, though it experienced interruptions due to military coups from 1964 to 1985. In recent decades, Brazil has emerged as a stable democratic power and one of the largest economies in the world, thanks to industrialization and its abundant natural resources. Brazil's flag features four colors, green, yellow, blue, and white. The large green field represents Brazil's lush forests and green landscapes. In the center, there's a bright yellow diamond shape, which stands for the country's valuable mineral resources like gold and diamonds. Inside the yellow diamond, you'll find a blue circle with 27 white stars. This blue circle with stars represents the sky over Rio de Janeiro on the morning of November 15, 1889. That's the day Brazil became a republic. The 27 stars symbolize Brazil's states and the federal district. The flag's design was inspired by the banner of the former Empire of Brazil from 1822 to 1889. In the imperial flag, Green represented the House of Braganza, the royal family of Brazil's first emperor, Pedro I. The yellow color stood for the Habsburg family, which was the royal family of Pedro I's wife. When Brazil became a republic, the flag was updated to remove the coat of arms from the imperial flag. Instead, the blue circle with stars was added to represent the new republican government. Brazil is a huge country in South America with some amazing geography. It is the largest country in the continent and the fifth largest in the world, covering about 3.29 million square miles or 8.51 million square kilometers. Brazil has a lot of different types of land, from mountains and highlands to lowlands and plains. The Amazon rainforest which is one of the most important rainforests in the world, is located in northern Brazil. Brazil's capital city is Brasilia. It is a modern city that was built in the 1950s to be the new capital. Before Brasilia, Rio de Janeiro was the capital city. Brazil shares borders with several countries in South America. These include Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia, Peru, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, French Guyana, a French territory, and Uruguay. In total, Brazil borders 10 different countries in South America. Some of these neighboring countries have Spanish as their main language. Others speak English or have cultural ties to France. Brazil's huge size means it touches many nations on the continent of South America. Sharing borders helps Brazil learn about and connect with the diverse countries surrounding it. Brazil is a huge country with different climates because of its size, location, and terrain. The equator runs through northern Brazil, so most of the country has a tropical climate. In the Amazon rainforest region, the climate is tropical, humid, and hot all year round. It rains heavily from November to April. Temperatures are usually between 25 to 32 degrees Celsius or 77 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The Amazon gets so much rain because the hot, humid air rises from the trees and rivers. In northeastern Brazil, near the Atlantic Ocean, the climate is semi-arid. This means it doesn't rain much and it gets really hot. This region sometimes has droughts, and the amount of rain can change a lot from year to year. In summer, temperatures can reach 40 degrees Celsius, or 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it hard to grow crops and raise livestock. The central western region has a tropical savanna climate with dry and rainy seasons. 
The dry season is from May to September, with temperatures between 18 to 32 degrees Celsius, or 64 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The rainy season is from October to April, but it's only a little warmer then. The South has a humid subtropical climate with mild temperatures and rain all year. Winters are rarely cold here, but in the highlands, it sometimes snows and gets below freezing. Summers are pleasantly warm at 20 to 28 degrees Celsius or 68 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, but also humid. The Atlantic coastal regions also have a tropical climate with high humidity and rain year-round. On the northeast coast, seasonal trade winds bring rain and cooler temperatures from June to August. On the south coast, the warm Brazil current brings rain and storms during summer. Brazil is a very diverse country with people from different backgrounds. The country's history of migration and colonization has shaped the variety of people who live there today. In the 16th century, Brazil was colonized by the Portuguese, who brought enslaved Africans to work on sugarcane and coffee plantations. Today, people of mixed heritage, with European, African, and indigenous roots, make up the largest group in Brazil, accounting for 45.3% of the population. The white population, making up 43.5%, includes descendants of Portuguese settlers and immigrants from other European countries like Italy and Germany. These groups came to Brazil in the 19th and early 20th centuries to work in the coffee and other industries. The black population, 10.2%, is mainly made up of descendants of enslaved Africans who were brought to Brazil during the colonial period. The indigenous population, while small at 0.6%, includes the original people of Brazil. Lastly, the Asian population at 0.4% is mainly made up of immigrants from Japan and China. The Japanese began immigrating to Brazil in the early 20th century and have created one of the largest Japanese communities outside of Japan. Portuguese is the official and most widely spoken language in the country, with small pockets of Spanish, German, Italian, Japanese, and English being spoken around the country. Most people in Brazil follow Christianity, with about 50% being Roman Catholic and 31% being Evangelical. This adds up to 81% of the country's population. Here are some incredible Brazilians who became famous worldwide in different fields. First up, let's kick things off with sports. Brazil has produced some of the greatest soccer players ever. You've heard of Pele, Ronaldinho, and Neymar. Pele is considered one of the best players of all time. He helped Brazil win three World Cup championships and scored over 1,000 goals in his career. Ronaldinho dazzled fans with his fancy footwork and skills, and Neymar is the current Brazilian soccer superstar, playing as a forward for Paris Saint-Germain and the Brazilian national team. Next, let's move to the world of fashion and modeling. Brazil has given us stunning supermodels like Giselle Bündchen. Giselle is one of the highest paid models ever and has walked the runways for top designers worldwide. With her beautiful looks and successful career, she's an inspiration to many. Brazil has also gifted the world with incredible writers and authors. One name that stands out is Paulo Coelho. He's the author of the best-selling book, The Alchemist, which has sold over 65 million copies and been translated into 80 languages. Paulo's writings often explore self-discovery, spirituality, and following your dreams. These are just a few examples of the talented Brazilians who have made their mark globally. From athletes and models to authors and artists, Brazil has produced so many incredible people who have inspired and entertained audiences around the world. So the next time you enjoy watching a soccer game, reading a great book, or admiring a beautiful model, 
Remember, some of the best talents may have come from amazing Brazil. From a land first inhabited by indigenous tribes and later colonized for its rich resources like gold and sugar, Brazil blossomed into a vibrant nation celebrating its mixed roots from Africa, Europe, and beyond, while cherishing its breathtaking natural playgrounds like the mighty Amazon rainforest. If you enjoyed this video on Brazil, you'll love this next one.